there this is Amy thanks so much for stopping by my channel today I'm going to show you a fun flower to paint with fan brushes and it's kind of a poppy inspired looking design but not your typical poppy anyways I'm going to be using two different fan brushes uh, this one is both of them are plaid one stroke brushes but I'm not really sure just has the number on here, 1196, so I'm not really sure what the actual size is of this one. And then I have a smaller one, which is a number one. So hopefully that helps. Then I have a Westonia fine line brush. And that is for fingernail detailing, but I love it for a fine liner. And then I have a number 12 flat brush and then a number two script liner all right paint I'm going to be using today is licorice thicket fresh foliage moon yellow and cardinal red now, if you'll notice, some of the paints are enamel, some of them are multi-surface. Yes, I do combine and do a little bit of each. Um, that's just how, how I've always done it. So, it seems to work out just fine. And I am going to start by doing the actual flowers. I am just taking my fan brush and dipping it this is the larger of the two and just completely getting it wet all right so I'm gonna start off with my first one I did this and I didn't like how they were doing it or turning out as far as that goes but I'm gonna go ahead and push up and I'm gonna pull it off before I get before I actually get to the bottom of the flower so just to show you again because I wasn't sure how that turned out I'm gonna just leave it just like that and then I just fully loading it, just putting a lot of paint in there, pressing it down, if you can see that, and then pushing it forward and then coming back up. And then doing it again over here, just slightly pushing it up and pulling it back. And then doing it here, make sure I'm on the camera here, pulling it back. And again, if you go over it, you do it, and you feel like you need to go back over it again, you certainly can. Okay, you certainly can. So, like on this one, I think I feel like I want to make it a little rounder. And I'm going to do it like that. Oh, let's see how many do I have. This one, I just feel like I didn't like how that end worked. So, yeah, like I said, you can work them. You can, you know, tap on them a little bit if you want more paint on them. Just again, it's just an easy, easy, easy design. And then just one you can just pull up, pull down. If you feel like you got some missing, you can tap it in, or you can go back over it again and pull it in. And I got a little bit there. And just now, if you had pre-coated this, you might be able to get away without having any of those but that's fine it's perfectly fine okay so the next step is then to take the smaller one and I'm going to get it all full of black all full of black and then what I'm going to do is tap on here and I'm just going to do a little bit of pushing like that whoops and I just stuck my brush in the red dagnab it Alright, so on this one, if I wanted it to come down a little bit more, I could. Let's try to keep myself from putting it in the wrong color. I'm pushing it down, pushing it a little bit. And if I wanted to have a little bit more black on it, I can do the same thing. It's not meant to have like a real definite, you know, roundness or whatnot. Not the intention. It's just for you to put the brush down in here, push it a little bit, and pull it up. Again, you're going to get a different look. Probably each time you do it, you're going to get a different look. Fine. That's perfectly fine. 
Again, if you want to put it in and do it again, you can. You know, if you want it to have more of a, you know, a little higher, fix that, that's fine. You know, having it come up and down, it's, it's perfect. Perfect. Just fine. Love it. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is, actually, I think what I'm going to do first is take my flat brush, and again, on this, I am just not real, I don't know, I just dip, up, dip either side into color, and then I do the blending, you know, with the brush going back and forth. I need to move this in here a little bit more. Going back and forth. Then I tip it into the yellow because I want yellow in my green. I like it. I like my green. I've discovered I like my green with some yellow in it. Or more yellow than maybe it already has. Alright, so here we go. I am going to pull in these these little stems. And I might get a little red on them. Not a biggie. Not a big deal. If I do, come down. Do the same thing over here. And then pull my little twiggy, twiggy little branch stem, whatever we're going to call it. And then pull it down. I mean, I can come across it like that if I want. Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. I need to pan this out a little bit. And then come over here to this one and do the same. I mean, I can come across this if I wish. And it's fine. And this one, I can do the same thing. I can hit this flower and come through it. And there we go. That's nabbit. That's one thing bad about working on this large piece. I feel like I'm off the camera most of the time. Alright, so then what I'm going to do is take my, my number two script liner. And I'm going to do a couple buds. Okay, I'm going to do where I pull this down like that. And do just a couple buds, and I can just pull the green in here. And I also can do it with my flat brush. I don't have to do it with the script liner. But I'm just making a circle bud, and I'll I'll fuss with it a little bit more with my flat brush. Okay, I'll just push my bud down here. I think it's cute. And then you come in with your liner brush and. You know, do some other colors in it. Make a little thicker, make a little thinner. Make this little thing here, the little um, bud bigger if you want. You know, however you want to do it. Alright, then I'm going to do another one. Because I want a couple. And I'm just going to bring it out like that. Again with my script liner. And I bring it out here, and then use the script liner to do the little pot or bud, whatever you want to call it. Because it's not, not open and not showing any color whatsoever as far as the, the flower goes. And I can make this bigger. Like I said, I will I will be hitting this with my flat brush, but this is just a get it started kind of deal. I don't want that too thick. Alright, here we go. I'm just drawing it in. Just kind of wanted it to be hanging out there. Alright, and you can also use this brush too if you wish to kind of make your your stems a little bit thicker. Fill them in a little bit. Because as most of you know, I'm really into my paint being opaque. I like it to be where you can't really see through it. But I like I just like this. I can just go over it. I like to intertwine my 
my stems. Just keep working, working the, working the stems, getting the color in it that I want. I like just to, to have a, not a set, all green of one color, all yellow. You know, just like it to have a variety of looks to it. Just like my branches. But I think that's cute. All right, so with that being said, my next step is to load my flat brush again. And I'm going to go back in here and just kind of tie my tie my flowers to the little stems. I am pulling in some red, which is fine. I like a variety of color, so that's perfectly fine. I can come back over here and work with it a little bit more. If you don't like your paint, you're kind of intermixing a little bit, then you need to give this some drying time, hit it with a blow dryer, a heat gun, whatever the case might be, whatever you have on hand, and get it to dry some before you do this part. I personally am just fine with it. But I know there are some people that aren't. So, you know, do what you feel comfortable with and what makes you happy when you're painting. This is your painting. And I'm okay with it, having the red in it. But that's me. Okay, let's see where we're at here. I'm going to pull this in, just like that. Do it again here. Hopefully you can see it. Sorry if I end up floating off screen. I really am trying to do better with that. I know sometimes the objects I'm painting are just so big that I end up floating off the screen. Okay, and I'll just continue doing this. I'm going to go up here, do the same thing, just on my chisel edge. And you can see why this is kind of poppy inspired, but it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a poppy flower. You know, it's not a true design that I would do for a poppy, but definitely with the colors and such could fit right in there. If you have different ways of tying your flowers into the stems, you're welcome to share. I do have a Facebook page where I do post that on here. Feel free to post anytime any kind of a design that you've painted that you've gotten from me, or if you have like a better, a better idea on something I've shown that maybe there's a different technique that would work better. I'm, I'm so open to that. Please don't ever feel afraid to share that because that's how we learn. You know, we all have different techniques, different thoughts when it comes to how we create. And that's okay. That's how we learn. Alright, so I'm just going to leave these. I might put a little bit more color into some of these. I'm not too concerned with them though. Again, you can do them, do them however. All right, I'm going to kind of scrape my brush off a little bit here, clean it out, and then I'm going to go into doing some uh, painting as far as filling in. I am doing the greens and the yellows. With my my uh, leaves, a little bit of red, as you can see. There's some red peeking in there. Try to 
Let's see if I can get that one over here. Or so basically what I'm doing is just coming through here and I'm going to be painting these leaves. This is just kind of a filler. A filler branch. I'm going to be try to be easy here because I know when I go into that flower I am going to be pulling up some red. So I say it's perfectly fine if you're someone who doesn't like that and you want to give it some drying time, that's fine. And I can just try to do my petals in different directions to try to avoid that if at all possible. Some of them I have going in one direction, some of them I have going in another. So if you don't like that, then you do it the direction you feel like you need to do it, if that makes sense. I am trying again to make this opaque. If you're not someone that has seen any of my videos, um, please understand that I do reuse the gloss that I'm painting on to do other videos from, and therefore I try to clean it up the best I can. I'm not selling this, I'm just using it for the purpose of, of training, you know, doing the tutorials. So, um, you know, like I said, I just, I like to try to point that out so you don't think, oh my gosh, she's selling that? No, I'm not selling this. I am just purely using it as a piece to teach you with. Now, if you want to come in and do, do like a little vein in here, like you're attaching it to the stem, you know, by all means do, you know, it's up to you, and then I'll just lightly, you know, put one in, lightly, 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 and then I can actually start doing my leaves. I do it like that. I'm going to try to do a little mixture of leaves. But they're not all the same. And on this one, then I'm going to come back this way. Bring it back. Whoops. Your brush gets so, so messy. Then it's like, okay, which way am I going here? And then you can either pull, this is, this is going to be too gloppy, pull it this direction, you're putting a, the veining in or the stem, or you can come back the other way. Other way is fine. Alright, so then I'm going to turn this, do another one up here. Now when you're doing these leaves, you can turn your piece as you're going. Try not to rub any of this off. Or you can learn to, I got a piece of hair in there, learn to, you know, continue on without turning it. And I do like a lot of leaves. So if you're new to my channel and you don't realize that, I will put a lot of leaves into my pieces. So once again, if you don't like that, that's not something that you have to do. Just know that that's something I like to do. So you know, you create your piece as you like it. If you get get my gist. Okay, so like this one, I can come over here, go back. I can even try to scroll it around a little bit. The only problem is, is when you're trying to show movement in your leaves on glass, it can be a little bit more difficult because of it moving the paint and showing the glass. 
that makes sense. When you're doing it on paper, it doesn't have a tendency to, to do that as much. A little bit easier. And you can just do the regular, you know, one stroke leaves in addition um, to this. Again, I picked up some red. And I'm going to go over this a little bit. I think I'll probably pick up a little bit more. That's all right. Okay, so you can see how doing something like this can just get you really into painting all kinds of things. I mean, as far as you continue on with your leaves, you continue on uh, with the flowers, you can put other flowers into this. I typically, on a lot of my videos, just focus on one flower. Sometimes I will go ahead and put some other flowers in, but I, you know, a lot of times just do the one because I'm trying to keep my videos somewhat short so that they're not you know, 12 hours long. I want you to actually watch them and be interested in them and not say, oh my goodness, this is way too much. Yeah, I don't want that, so. Just put a little dot in there, a little dash. And continue on. Now, like I said, you can just keep going here with these, fill it in. You can do another round of filler filler leaves and I might use that for this right here because I think it might be a perfect place to add it and again you can come do your your leaves going in different directions they all have to be straight going you know one right after another they can be rotated where you have your leading with the darker color on top, then switching it, it just doesn't matter. It's really, again, how you, how you want to do it. It's your piece. There you go. All right, now I did mention on the pods that I was going to probably try to do, go over these a little bit. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that now. What you can do is start off like you're doing, I guess it's like a, um, like a half seashell type thing. And then if you want to make it rounder, you can just take your brush and do that. I like to add in some other colors, so I do put in the yellow, which will make it more opaque. And just keep playing with it till you get it to look the way you want it. And I like it just like that. And then I can actually come over here because I have this going on. May put in a few, stroke a few leaves in here. Just to give it some more interest. Maybe even hit it it a little bit this way and I'll just keep it keep it simple all right so then I have this little pot over here I don't have any any little leaves on this over here like I said you, you don't have to do like a ton I got red on there again why am I getting red I don't know I don't even want red on there Okay, I could do that, and then I can come down, I did it again, dipped it into the red. I don't know what my problem is with that tonight. Sorry about that. I know better. Then I can just come down this, um, turn it, and come down it with the same color on the outside that's on the other side outside and then pull it down um, we can do 
the lighter green on the outside and then I can just swing it back. There again you see where what I mean by that, I just have to lightly go over this. If I had a base coat underneath this it would probably cover nicer. So we'll do that and then I'm going to do my pod here as I mentioned and I will kind of bring it out here kind of go around it like that you can see how then I can just turn it and do basically the same stroke but this way I'm going to dip my brush one side of it into the yellow it will make it more opaque as I mentioned before now if I were actually going to complete this and you know it'd be a piece that I'm going to use or sell I would basically let it dry for an hour put the glass into my cold oven and then turn it on add my preheat time to the bake time and then I would allow it to bake. Once it's finished baking, I'm going to allow it to cool off, you know, turn it off, cool it off, and pull it out once I cool it off. It's the sudden change in temperature that will make a piece break. And I'm just saying that you don't want that to happen. You've done all your hard work. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you follow follow your manufacturer's guidelines and you know do what it says. All the paints are different. There's so many paints out on the market for this type of painting. That's something else I recommend too, is if you're getting into glass painting, hey, try different products. See what works best for your painting style. That's what I did in the beginning. I've been doing glass painting for a long time, and I had to do a lot of trial and error before I came up with what worked best for my painting style. Now, it's not to say that you could have a, you know, Maybe you paint in other styles too, but you could use the product for that as well. Just that, you know, I do suggest that you, you know, try different things and don't just go based on what I like or what somebody else likes. Alright, so I am going to stop on this for now. I like how it turned out. If you do as well, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Remember, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And once you're done viewing the video, underneath the video you'll see a share button. Please hit on that and that will allow you to share my videos with your friends and family on your social network. I would appreciate that. I am continuing always to try to grow my channel and love it when you come and visit and definitely appreciate you. So once again, thanks so much for coming. I hope you like this, and until the next time, you have a good one.